Hey YouTubers, Gabe here with Review Dork, where we review tech, media, viral videos, and video games. But today we're going to be talking about how to export your videos from Adobe Premiere Pro CC and get the best possible quality video here on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, hey, we all can't be James Cameron, we all can't produce something like Avatar, but we could come pretty damn close and I'm going to show you each setting or my preferred settings that will help your videos look amazing. Coming right up after the break. Alright guys, so before we jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and look at the export settings or the export settings that I suggest for the best quality of video uploads, let's look at the recommended upload encoding settings uh, per the YouTube help page. Now, on this page, we see that uh, they recommend an MP4. Okay, and um, we move down and we see the audio codec. So the sample rate, either 96 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. The video codec, now this is important, and you'll see this in Adobe Premiere Pro when we get to that screen. The H.264 progressive scan, no interlacing, high profile. Now, remember this here, high profile, okay. And then frame rates. So content should be encoded and uploaded in the same frame rate it was recorded. Okay, so if your source file was 60 frames per second um, it's probably best that you don't down convert it to 30 frames per second or even up convert from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second I know a lot of people um, just do it without thought and you know you really don't see the difference when you're in post-production but when your source is 60 frames try to keep your post-production 60 frames. If your source is 30 frames, keep your post-production 30 frames. Um, interlaced content should be de-interlaced before uploading. For example, 1080i at 60 frames per second should be de-interlaced to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Going from 60 interlaced fields per second to 30 progressive frames per second. Okay, now I know this is all very technical, but hey, YouTube provides us with this information. Now, this here, bitrate, this is also another key term that we are going to end up talking about when we jump into the uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so the bit rates below are recommendations for uploads. Audio playback bitrate is not related to video resolution. Well, we know this since your video stream and your audio stream are basically two separate channels, right? So. I like to record in 1080p. There are some of you who may have like the uh, Panasonic, Panasonic, the Lumix, and you can record in 4K. And for those recording in 4K, uh, your bit rate is between 35 and 45 megabits per second. And that is if you are recording in 24, 25, or 30 frames per second. If you are recording in 48, 50, or 60 frames per second, your uh, bit rate should be between 53 and 68 megabits per second. Now, again, I record in 1080p at 30 frames per second. So YouTube is suggesting to me that I um, set my bit rate at 8 megabits per second. Now, if I was shooting at 60 frames per second, I would jump up to 12 megabits per second. Now, these are all just basically guidelines. Now, a lot of us have uh, high-speed internet with you know pretty good upload. Um, my, my, my upload speeds are somewhere in the 20s, right? So, I can afford to uh, increase my bit rate for the best quality. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, as you can see here, recommended video bit rates for HDR uploads. Again, at 1080p, which I record is 10 megabits per second. Uh, if I'm running 48, 50, or 60 frames per second, that'll be 15 megabits per second. And then here we have recommended audio bit rates for uploads. Okay, 
So now we got all that out of the way. And I know I said that we were going to jump into Adobe Premiere Pro right away, but I actually want to show you guys something. Now, this is one of my videos that I um, recently produced out of Adobe Premiere. It's already on YouTube. It's called YouTube is Broken, Not Really, and I talk about the YouTube algorithm. But this is the source file that Adobe Premiere pumped out for me. Now, if you see here, that file is three gigabytes. That is a very, very, very big file. Now, what I ended up doing was going into YouTube after it was processed and downloading uh, the final product. And the final product after YouTube compressed the hell out of that video file, you end up with 207 megabytes. All right, so basically what you see with this at three gigabytes to 207 megabytes. Guys, that's like sharing a pizza with YouTube and YouTube eating up 11 and three quarter slices or just pretty much not even eating it up, just pretty much discarding 11 and three quarter slices and just giving you uh, a you know, quarter slice or, or half a slice or whatever. Uh, we're talking about drastic compression here. So there is going to be a, a significant loss in video quality from the three gigabytes to the 207. And depending on how big your source file is and how much information you give to YouTube. So now that we got that out of the way, um, let's jump in to Adobe Premiere. Now, I already have a video here ready for export. And as you can see here, the format is already H.264. Okay, that is your encoding format. Now, if we look at the presets, we can go all the way down, all the way down to the bottom. And there's actually a YouTube preset in Adobe Premiere Pro. And this preset we have here um, okay, so we have selected the preset here, and now we're looking at our source file, right? So our source is uh, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, progressive. Remember, YouTube likes progressive, not interlaced, uh, and 48,000 hertz stereo. Okay, now we're going to be focusing on video. I really never touch the audio parameters, I focus specifically on video. So here we are in the video section and we see our width and we see our height and we see the frame rate at 30 and we see our square pixels at 1. All right, we don't want to play with that. Uh, NTC and PAL, you know, it depends if you're in the US or Europe, but we're uploading uh, digital media to YouTube. So this really doesn't matter, but since I'm in America, I'm NTSE. Okay, so now the profile, the profile is set to high per YouTube standards, and we have the level that's set to 4.2. Now, this is a little interesting here because 4.2 or anything in the fours, uh, that was a level that was typically used by standard broadcasters, okay? And what I want to do is change this to level 5. Point one, and when I do that, you could see that my preset goes back to custom. All right, so let's go back. And why did I change it to 5.1? Well, 5.1 is the standard used by Blu rays or the standard used by high definition. So, what that means is that your max bit rate, um, instead of it being 20 megabits per second, it's now. 240,000 megabits per second when and, and this is really really important and I'll show you guys in a second okay now if we go down to render at maximum depth I like to click this because I use a DSLR to record I use a Canon 70D uh, a lot of you guys are 
some of you again are probably using mirrorless cameras or maybe even a digital camcorder but since I'm using a Canon and some of you are using Nikons um, I like to use this render at maximum depth okay um, it just creates better image quality all right I'm not going to get into the technicalities in that but you get better image quality when you render at maximum depth now does this mean your render time takes longer absolutely now see here's the thing guys if you're spending a lot of money on a high-end camera if you're spending money on the perfect lighting solution for your videos you know you don't want to cut corners you know there's guys out there you can find youtube videos out there where guys talk about the speediest export settings but we don't want speedy we want the highest quality after all Thousands of people will be watching your video and will be judging you based on your quality. And quality is very, very important to me, guys, because if you looked at some of my videos from when Review Dork first started to now, uh, you could see I paid a lot of attention to my video quality. Okay. Okay, guys. So here we are, bitrate encoding and VBR1 pass. I changed that to VBR2 pass. This allows for uh, just better encoding of the video. Now, in one pass, Adobe is simply going to casually calculate the variances in bits. So if you have high, act, uh, high action sequences or if uh, a scene just requires a, a spike in information, uh, Adobe is only going to calculate that one time. But if you do VBR2 pass, Adobe is going to check and recheck and that's really what you want you want it to check and recheck and make sure that it's getting as much information as possible so that's why I do VBR2 pass it really adds up to a better quality video now target bitrate as you can see here the target bitrate here is 16 now I have my uh, level at 5.1 and I have my profile at high but um, I set my target bitrate at 16 and my maximum bitrate, mm, maybe throw it at 50. Let's go ahead and just throw that there to 50. Now again, this is all about giving YouTube as much information as possible because as I showed you in the examples, you take a 3 gigabyte file and you feed it to YouTube, it's going to go ahead and chew up and discard 93% of that information. Okay, so if you look at the target bit rate here, this is what is gonna increase your file size. So if I change this file size or my target bit rate to 50 megabits per second, look at my file size here is gonna be 3,521 megabytes. And that's a very, very, very large file size. Now, again, I'm not recording in 4K. And honestly, anything over 20 is going to be overkill, especially for 1080p. You're really not going to notice the difference. So we want to go ahead and keep this between 16 and 20. No more than 20. Again, that's going to be overkill uh, for a 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now, if you're doing 60 frames per second, yeah. Throw it right up there at 20. Maybe even throw it up at 25 just for, uh, you know, just to be safe. But that's pretty much it. These are the settings that I like to use. Now, I don't do a keyframe distance. I don't worry about that. VR video. Oh, no, it's not a VR video. Uh, as far as a maximum render quality, you can click this. And it's not going to do much to your file size. But it's going to take its time rendering. Now, a video file like this is probably going to take my PC, and I'm running an Intel Core 7, it's probably going to take this PC about 20 minutes to render. Now, if I use maximum render quality, it's probably going to take about an hour. And honestly, again, that would be extreme overkill. And again, this is about being smart and feeding YouTube more information than what it needs but just really not doing it so much so that you really can't discern the difference in video quality all right so 
We see here file size is 1,127 megabytes and hey, there you go, that's it. Now you can go ahead and hit key here. Now if you hit key, it's going to send everything on over to uh, the Adobe Media Encoder so that you can get right back into Adobe Premiere CC here and get back to editing and all the such. But uh, as you can see, it's already popping up right there. Um, but if you hit export with these settings here, this is what's going to happen. You're going to see pass one of two. So it's going to make one pass. That's going to take some time. And then it's going to make a second pass. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you think. Hit the subscribe button. Ah, feed a poodle! Uh, well, I don't really have a poodle. I have a lab. But if I had a poodle, that's what I would say. It just sounds cooler than feed a lab! Uh, well, either way, I just don't really want to sound stupid saying it. Anyways, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. This is Gabe with Review Dork. Peace!